Aloha. Uh, with this video, I wanted to uh, include a lot of things that I've been talking about in the last few videos, but really revisit topics such as CERN, the Mandela Effect, and tie it into dreams, this gesture alchemy, and the mainstream scientism interpretation of this reality. Um, they're claiming to be in the knowing of everything, literally saying that string, thing, string theory is the theory of everything. So if they can give you their theories of everything based upon their backwards, upside down interpretations of reality, then uh, I can give my theories of their theories of everything based upon my observations of all the deceptions that have been cast down upon our consciousness for however many generations. So I don't know how this video, I, I have a few things in line. So bear with me if I'm jumping all over the place. If you listen to these videos uh, before, then you're used to it. But I haven't been in the flow of things for a while. So uh, here we go. So what this really boils down to is this understanding, understanding, and overstanding that in order to control people, you have to manipulate their consciousness so that they can control themselves. Ultimately, one person can't control, you know, billions of people. You have to have an interwoven sort of mechanism to make other people control them and have other people informed of information and not informed of information. Simultaneously, you have to maintain a, this kind of state of emptiness in the masses of people. So at, you think of it as like the pyramid. The pyramid at the bottom you have of the pyramid holding up the pyramid. You have the, the, the most beat down and destroyed individuals which is going to be the masses of people if you intend to be kings and queens of a universe you have the majority the masses of people so this is an obvious uh, interpretation of or uh, an observation of criminal or demonizing the indigenous people and genociding the people who had an alternative interpretation of the universe. Every single alternative interpretation of this universe needed to be destroyed. Not only what their beliefs were or their interpretations were, but the people themselves, because largely these stories that were carried on over generations upon generations weren't held in history books these were these were stories this was wisdom that was passed along verbally passed along through the generations this is why the younger generations the grandchildren and the great grandchildren hung out with the grandparents so they could teach them the ways of whatever culture whatever peoples whatever sciences those um those um people were about and also, the elders are very in tune to the new souls that are coming into this reality. So they can they can also pinpoint what kind of person this new baby might be. And it wasn't a forceful sort of thing. It was an, observ an, uh, an observable sort of thing. Whereas you have the forceful ways in the mainstream society of, well... You know, people who are born with a silver spoon in their mouth just taking over daddy's, you know, business and just doing that. Or you have people who are forced by their families, like, follow in the footsteps and do this or do in their own way. Whatever it is, you can see how that sort of reality is based upon the system itself. It's not based upon anything real based, connected to the people. It's based upon keeping the system alive. So whereas the old school interpretations of who and what we are, our relationships to earth itself, this experience itself, consciousness itself, was based upon the, the peoples, the, the individuals and how they interpret this reality. 
layered with the the wisdom that has been passed down upon generations the shifting in consciousness goes how i'm observing it when the people instead of vesting their their focus their livelihood their existence on nature on their stories on their wisdom on what has continually be been passed down through the the consciousness of the culture the people once that shifted into western ideologies once that shifted into this materialistic colonial interpretation of reality then that's when you had people locked into a world that can be easily manipulated because now you have the information or the knowledge coming from a certain mindset this western ideological mindset and when you have people that that's another way to make people dumb and make people just follow a, a version of reality that has nothing to do with the reality at all and has everything to do with uh, manipulating people to think act and feel a certain way to add up to a certain agenda so this is where we are right now and i was just thinking earlier today like what if knowledge is like powerful if knowledge can be seen as like one of the most powerful things that's out there then you could also see that in reference to the jester alchemy the illusion of knowledge is at least equal to the power of knowledge if that illusion of knowledge if those illusions are existing in a space that is not really concerned with time like I said, these entities, this energy, this this um, this parasitic consciousness is not concerned with time because in a sense, you, we could see it theoretically, even if you want to say it theoretically, there's this trapped sort of energy here that lives through the people, the people who have been dumbed down and locked into um, these, these backwards and upside downs interpretations of their realities. Um, this parasite needs people to be more and more and more emptied out in order for it to um, have more influence or have more life force in this in this uh, reality. So I didn't think I was going to start on this, but it's okay because I can loop back to it. But I was thinking earlier uh, about the the uh the lucifer stories and how people say all the time like yeah this place is hell this place is um the the, the god of uh, destruction or evil or whatever and then people don't even take it that far they just say like chaos and free will and uh, whatever you want to interpret it as you know what i'm talking about when when i mention that stuff and how i see it is that the potential for the ultimate evil is allowed in this universe the, the the most ultimate evil is allowed through the free will of each and every individual and based upon for a poetic interpretation uh, the, the weight of your heart like how heavy your heart is does your heart is your heart heavier in experience than the weight of this world which is influencing people to destroy themselves like, are you as an, an, in, an a sovereign soul, are you going to susceptible yourself to the worlds of this nightmare experience we call um, the conscious reality or this physical reality? Or are you going to expand your consciousness to observe the, the world itself? And how I explain that for people who haven't heard this before is the difference between... Uh, running away from something in your dream and facing something that's trying to trigger you in your dream. So in a dream, if you're faced with a demon or something that's scaring you as a kid or even as an adult, um, you can see how the world, the, the dream lasts longer when you face that whatever that is, is being brought up to you. Now, once you face that, you're you're facing a part of yourself in that dream you're facing an experience that you have in some sort of way however minute it might be in some sort of way you have materialized that dream in the dream world is what i'm saying in the dream world because this is your subconscious to 
learn something, to experience something. Who's to say that the physical reality, not completely, not straight across the board, like definitively, who's to say, but in, in many ways, who's to say that this world overall, this physical reality is in another version of that? Instead of, but the, the, the stakes seem to be a little higher because we have a physical body and you can physically leave this experience if something devastating happens to you in this life. Whereas in a dream, you experience that devastating event, but you just shift into another dream. So this is how I interpret the reality and how I'm going to go into interpreting more and more the the CERN perspective, the simulation theory perspective, the string theory perspective, the, the Mandela effect, and all of these other programs, heliocentrism, all these other programs that have been projected into our reality to make us think, act, and feel a certain way. Like I said, the dumber you are, the further you are away from empowering yourself to address the issues of this world overall. The more the, the, that's why the, the, the public education system, the inner cities have to be completely dumbed down. The inner cities have to be fighting themselves. They're not even learning how to take care of themselves more than they're learning the negative side effects of this broken society. This broken society makes people think and act and feel a certain way. Even even the stuff that you cherish, like this image is showing you right now. Even the stuff that you used to look up to. The stuff that, like Martin Luther King Jr. has his name on streets. You drive down Oakland, you drive down North Oakland, you're going to drive, you're going to run into Dr. Martin Luther King, King Street. You're going all across the road. But what happened to Malcolm X? What was his story? What? Why was his story not acknowledge the depths. Why? Because the system wants you to maintain a certain level of consciousness. And once you get to that certain point, then you can be controlled. Like I said, the dumb, if you're dumb, then you can be controlled by a fool. A fool can enslave you. If you're dumber than the fool, or if you worship the fool, <coughs> you can be enslaved by a fool. You can be walked around. There's people out here who are being controlled by their dogs it's people out here looking at some of these people who own these dogs around here and and you can see like their relationship you can't even ha you can't even handle a dog it's people out there being controlled by their kids so you can't tell me that hundreds and hundreds of years and generations upon generations of mind control isn't going to be as effective on people if you can understand that people are being controlled by their dogs and their kids. So if that's the case, zoom that all the way out and look how that could be affecting the world, given that your education system is completely bogus. The university university system is bogus on many levels. Society itself has no morals, has no values. No, there's nothing there. There's no nothing ethical about ignoring what happened within this manifest destiny mentality of colonizing the entire world and genociding all these people in the name of what in the name of their god whatever whatever god they're they're claiming to be a part of and whatever uh, systems that they claim to worship so in this system today we see on the outskirts of this reality or, or on the forefront of what they want you to know they want you to worship knowledge not knowledge based upon observing your your reality but knowledge based upon theoretical interpretations of this universe siphoned through the university system and all these other these other like Newton and Copernicus and all these other people who they worship Einstein today's version or uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, Ray Kurzweil, Brian Cox, uh, Michio Kaku, and all Bill Nye, all these other assholes that are out there. These are just the new versions, and what I wanted to do was use them and their words as an example to explain how I interpret the, um, the effect 
that that entire universe that they promote has on consciousness itself because my interpretation of stuff like the, the Mandela effect and time and dreams it all boils down to the the epicenter of consciousness so you can see just for observational purposes this is not completely like I'm just saying this this is how I observe it each individual can be seen as an epicenter of consciousness now you also have people see there's a difference between the epicenter of consciousness and the, the, the potential epicenter of consciousness and then you have inactive epicenters of consciousness and this goes into the people who some people say that you know we're surrounded by people who aren't even alive they have no souls how i interpret that is that I don't necessarily feel comfortable with saying some people have no souls. I'm 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 on board with saying, you know, some people are uh, uh th there's a little there's a little something different when you like I said in in the last video, you have to be a different kind of person to allow some of these evils to happen. And a lot of these people not only allow this stuff to happen, but they love that evil shit like that is a different kind of person and that that goes into the interpretations that i was talking about in reference to all of this gender blending stuff and all this other stuff watering down the cultures watering down the genders watering down the peoples your your race and every we're all human all that is a mind control program to make you think act and feel a certain way it's supposed to um, gray everything out and now that you have a blank slate of nothingness your entire history your entire your entire knowledge from your peoples and the and the books that were um, said to be burned but actually kept underneath the Vatican and kept underneath all these universities around the world all these interpretations of our reality um, are they're not our own they're largely caked on like i said you have in reference to the relationship that your heart has to evil well the weight that's passed down upon you and our our generations in this system has a weight to it that weight actually envelops your heart it, like a shell like a it, it encases your heart to where you can't even feel it anymore. And the only thing you have is the idea of what your heart is. This is why people can live in the world of Democrats and Republicans and, and follow people like politicians and really never make any like heartfelt connections to the, to the, uh, the compassionate, empathetic, uh, even sympathetic interpretations of what's happening with within the military industrial complex, the prison industrial complex, the colonialism, and all these other things that never get addressed. They never get, they never get dealt with. So as long as they never get dealt with, the system that is designed to encase your reality can continue to grow. So you think that your intelligence is growing. Like I said, uh, the, the system banks it, 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 it holds itself up on the pedestal by saying that through the evolution, the monkey evolution theory that the humans of today, the thought process of today, the consciousness of today is the evolutionary peak of this experience. Now, making money off of that based upon theories like a monkey evolution theory, heliocentrism, bank, big bang and all that other stuff, making money off of that is one thing truly observing your reality and acknowledging all of the stuff that has led up to today like acknowledging the architecture of machu picchu the architecture of the pyramids the architecture of um the the aztecs and the maya and and all across the earth the architecture that has been laser cut precision cut that even today's knowledge today's scientists can't repeat they can't do that so just by that observation completely washes out the idea that today's version of humanity is the evolutionary peak of consciousness because at one point there was some other kind of peak maybe maybe we are the evolutionary peak of consciousness um in some way 
But that doesn't mean in other ways we couldn't have been um, lacking in, re in, in comparison to other peoples. So, but the system that's alive today can't even acknowledge those people. They can't even acknowledge their existence, which is why they genocided those people. It can't acknowledge let it can't allow, acknowledge the people or their belief systems. You think they're going to acknowledge the science that they had, the connections and the interpretations of this universe? Of course not. So both of those realities at least have to be completely washed out and ignored. And like this image is saying, the conscious conscious job is not to teach unconscious to be conscious, but to make them conscious of their unconscious behavior. This is largely the, the at the foundation of what I'm talking about here. Like, I have no attachments to this. I'm just sharing this, like, with my friends, my homies, my brothers, my sisters, whoever it is, so they can, you know, think for themselves. And then, like, because <laughs> that's how I learned. That's the best way I learned was when I was just talking with my friends, my brothers, my sisters, whoever it was. That's the best way to learn. And when you have that, when you have that available, then... It, it, it's beyond just regular schoolwork. It's kind of like um, experience, like doing something. You learn, I learned more stuff on a field trip than I did in school than I did in many days of class. So this is just another version of like, of that It's in, in my eyes. So the opposite of that is to teach people to be unconscious. This is exactly what the education system is. It's teaching people to remain unconscious. Heliocentrism, mainstream media, they need to protect their unconscious foundation of their pyramid so that they do not, so it does not be revealed for what it is. Because this is a system. It's saying about people, this is why I talk about a lot of people like David Icke and Alex Jones who consistently want you to focus on a people but they don't want you to go into the infrastructure. They never really address the, the they'll address all day the beings within the infrastructure, but the true power is going to come once you start acknowledging and interpreting the world itself. Once you break down the world that these parasites live within, which is inside of each and every individual, that's when you actually start to empower people. And that's when, that's the problem that I have it's not really a problem. It's just an observation of why I just steer clear of these people. That's, the, that's an issue that I have with Alex Jones and David Icke and all those kinds of people is because they want you to focus on a, a bad guy. Well, if you got a bad guy, then who's the good guy? Is it Alex Jones or David Icke? No, it's you and everybody else. So who are you? What are you? See, David Icke and Bill, Bill uh, Alex Jones, I almost said Bill Hicks, Alex Jones, uh, they don't even go into that. They're, they're not going to go into that because as soon as you start going into that, that's when you start unraveling the system itself. And that's why I said there's some questionable things in there with these individuals who are making you think, act, and feel a certain way based upon another Hegelian dialectic of a villain and a superhero. When in actual fact, the thing that's going to empower you is you. And your connection to what is real, what is natural, what has actually happened in the past, what is happening right now, and what is happening, what is claiming to be or, or uh, projected into our reality to be happening in the future. Once you break down all, the, all those systems, we all know that the system makes its money off of keeping people dumb, keeping people, keeping people dumb in reference to history, the past keeping people distracted, desensitized, and overstimulated for the moment, right now. And then for the future, you're lost in this empty, nothing, just technological, material, physical-based reality that's only, that your future is based upon uh, dead, visiting dead planets like Mars with your technology. It's not about going to Mars with them, with the system. It's about them creating the technology to make you worship to go to Mars. They don't give a shit about Mars, obviously, because it's fake. It's not even the way it's, it's been presented. The, the, the design is to make you worship the technology 
that they made you think can go to Mars. Why do they want you to do that? Well, because that's what I'm getting into in the rest of these um, the rest of these slides here. Before I go any further, I wanted to address this <coughs> this idea that I got sidetracked again. And before I go any further, because this will be a good uh, like um, foundation to hearing this this ultimate evil these these uh subjects that are ultimate evil out there when you come from the perspective of this mind control program that's made designed for your consciousness to self implode that is the most ultimate evil when you understand that when you implode somebody's consciousness they can do some of the most heinous acts so if that's the case, and if that's the case, if that's known with the system, if that's what the system is doing, then we're talking about the ultimate evil. If you're talking about the ultimate evil, then you're talking about the ultimate, the 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 maximum allow allowance of evil in this reality. So, for example purposes, I'll use the Luciferian story that's presented to us by uh, the Bible and all this other, just a, a very just like a. Um, like like I don't know too much about the Bible. I don't know anything about the, the you know all that stuff and all. I don't. I'm not a Bible scholar or anything, but I have heard repetitive stories about the story of Lucifer falling from heaven and all this other stuff, and people saying, "Oh, that was Satan or that was the devil" and all this other stuff, and then other people saying, "No, that was just you know one of the higher angels who just wanted to." live in his or her own universe and have their own free will away from whatever kind of God. So that God created this bubble. You can see that as a bubble or a globe bubble in the waters of the most high, this bubble of reality where it can be God and King over the people. It traps within this bubble of reality. You can see how that is um, tied right into the the mind control of the system itself it's the same kind of mind control it's just creating creating gaps in people's reality in order to um, maintain those gaps so that the 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 energy itself can live through live through the emptied out the hollowed out consciousness that has gotten off the path of activating its consciousness and has just gotten to this dormant state, this sleep stasis of nothingness. What the Big Bang looks and smells like this, the 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 nothingness of this reality. Look at Mark Zuckerberg's ass. He's just the. This is one of the richest people in the world, and he is a he is a robot. He is dead. He's he. There is no kind of humanity in him, and. It's so obvious that the mainstream media have to joke about him the way they do in order to just like they joke about Trump in order to make it seem like that's something that you should be paying attention to. See, this is why I said the jester alchemy is a real thing. Your, your late night talk shows, your comedians, your Joe Rogan's a comedian, your politicians are laughable. This is a way to keep people from asking the questions that actually matter. So if you're constantly joking and laughing away your reality, you don't have to come to any real conclusions. You just have to be a part of the crew who is priding itself in laughing at the reality that's presented to you. This is what the mainstream media is. It's just a more complex version of like back in the day when there was no internet, when there was no TV, when there was no radio, there was just the the paper. But that paper, the words on that paper, the consciousness that was printed on that newspaper was strong enough to make certain people on other parts of the world send their send their kids and they themselves to war, to fight a war for what? For the beginnings of this pyramid that was being built on the blood and bones of the indigenous people, this this whole lack of acknowledging the 
pre-Columbian storylines in order to worship the post-Columbian storylines. So this is why I said it's so important to go in to decipher, not to just human the race story away just because, oh, just because the mainstream media is using race so it can divide and conquer people. No, it's not that simple. That's the, It's at least three times more complex than that when you understand that that's also there. Yes, it is being used to divide and conquer people, but they're going to only you're going to only be able to divide and conquer people based upon race if their consciousness is susceptible to being divided and conquered by race. Like there's like a meme going around right now talking about if you were convinced to vote for Trump by Facebook, then you're just stupid as shit. That's in, in so many words that was going on. So you have multiple layers of consciousness. And what happens is that since people don't decipher how all of them fit together, you have people priding themselves in like the Alan Jones mentality coming and attacking like flat earthers or people in like TYT mentality or the mainstream media attacking uh, conspiracy theorists or something. It's a completely different level of consciousness because you're talking about people who don't think, act, or feel for themselves. They're just regurgitating the information that exists inside the shell around their heart of consciousness so the, the, they don't they haven't even activated their 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 hearts yet the, the, their consciousness hasn't even been activated yet like i said you can have an, an inactive and an active consciousness and right now we're we're surrounded or soul we're surrounded by people who seem like they're dead inside, like they're they're not even, they, they have no soul. Like if you were to ask them to define with a soul or what their soul is, they're going to give you some stupid ass nothing or try and give you some religious interpretations. But ultimately, you can see just by just by thinking about that question and asking people and the answers that you're going to get, you can see that that response that you're going to get is empty, it's dead. It has nothing to do with the essence of who and what you are. In fact, it lives mostly in ignoring, ignoring the fear that people have from death, the fear that people have from life, from living. That when that is not acknowledged, then you're going to have people who are completely chaotic floating in a universe of nothingness and they're basically robots they're basically like mark zuckerberg sitting up there at that senate hearing they're they they're they're nothing inside so now it makes sense why mark zuckerberg looks the way he does and he's the one of the richest people in the world because that's an extreme thing to be he, he's rich in the world of the utmost evil and not only to mention that, he's rich at the expense, like at like he's getting kickbacks from the utmost evil. Like he that like that's what made his bank. So I mean, the system itself is evil, but this dude is billions and billions of times more evil. And this is what adds up to like what this image is talking about here, the, the unquestionable power to wage war on other nations on our behalf, only to maintain power must be taken away from these psychopathic criminals. These are psychopathic criminals and they're they're rich because not they're super smart, not that they, it's because they will do things that some other people will not do. Like I said, this is the difference between, like I said, only certain people will act out the most utmost evil. And then you have other people who will not at all do that. So you have the people who will who will have no problem with acting out the utmost evil, created an evil mentality, created an evil consciousness, created an evil university system in order to maintain their power over the people through the lack of knowledge, through the lack of consciousness, through the hiding of information, through the burying of of, of uh, entire nations and cultures and peoples underneath the military industrial complex and the prison industrial complex. This is a reality right now. They are imprisoning by the masses. The police department is a slave patrol. This is the unquestionable, 
They have unquestionable power because we've given them the unquestionable authority based upon the knowledge that they claim to have. This is why flat earth is so important because once you start to uproot the the universe that this system claims the, the 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 knowledge of the universe that this system claims to have once you start to destroy that that's when you start entering into the human story of what they did with that knowledge not only how that knowledge is ineffective in any uh, in every way this is why i said it's so much more important to to a address the human story and not get caught up in the physical the physical distraction story of the experience itself because you're knocking out two birds with one stone if you go into the story of the human itself then you will more efficiently be able to interpret the story of the human experience or the the nat natural earth experience this is the difference between the experience and the experience earth so there are these layers of reality, these layers of reality that um, I sometimes call layers of consciousness that people get trapped within. Ultimately, it boils down to people not really being able to activate their consciousness. And when you're not able to activate your consciousness, then you interpret your reality based upon um, the, the people or the entities that are around you that give you toys to play with. So going back to, and I want to close this little part out real quick, um, the Lucifer story around here. I wrote it down real quick. Just, just to say that there was some kind of being that was separated from the Most High in order to create its own kingdom. Let's call this kingdom Earth. In this, in this kingdom, when you're separated from the Most High, just imagine um, an electrical cable separated from its ground. It's either going to fl flop around and spark off all over the place or it's going to go out. So what I'm saying is that this world, this consciousness of this world is that cable that has been cut and is now flopping all over the place. That's the chaos. But at the same time, it has the free will to flop all over the place. Now, since that chaos stems from the most high it still has a consciousness now if that consciousness allows itself to create a universe or an illusion to make you not look at the chaos of that energy then you can create your you can build a universe where you are now god and king as long as you don't acknowledge that separation for the most from the most high and this is what the the mainstream religions are doing and have done and why a lot of them were created to maintain chaos this is why when i look at the bible and i look at these extremes and not only the bible but a, a lot of these other mainstream religious teachings and you see such extremes you're just like wait a second well those extremes are leaking through by the chaotic uh, beings who were knowledgeable they knew how this was going to affect people they knew that disconnect that insecurity there that uncertainty there they knew that it was existing so as long as you just keep doubling down this is why you have the old testament the new testament and all these other evangelicals methodists christian baptists all this other stuff you have all those because it the more complex it is the more real it seems for people Yet it's connected to what? Still, still people could connect themselves to like, oh, we're still part of uh, the, the Christian God or the Catholic God. Or even when they water all the mainstream religions down, they're talking about, oh, yeah, well, we're all talking about the same God. That's all playing the numbers to get people to fall into this trap of ultimately emptiness. There's no real answers there. There's just this idea of something that feels a certain way, that sounds a certain way, and that maybe had been written down at a certain time a certain way. So, But you never have any real thing. This shit was all still written by other dudes. It's just some other dudes that wrote this stuff down. It ain't the actual words of God or the Most High. You don't. The Most High is going to speak to you in, 
in symbols. It's going to speak to you. It's going to speak to you in your dreams, in your reality, in your experience in every moment. So when you look at the past, present, and future, and you see all these things that are like projected into our reality to be worshipped right now from the past, compared to the information that you're not at all allowed to look at from the past. Like I said, today you talk, you hear "God bless America," you see the Bible thrown in your face every single every single day. The politicians, all this other stuff, they they throw that in your face every single day. But what are they consistently ignoring? They're consistently ignoring the interpretations of the people who predate the Colombian mainstream religions, the Colombian education or intelligence, the Colombian uh, society that includes all of this genocide and all this other stuff that people are actually worshiping. You're, you, you love America. You love all this stuff. The, the modern America. You love all that shit then you are on board with, you have to also be completely okay with the genocide and in some kind of way, whether you have put it to words or not, you are on the team. You are on the, the, the crew of, we're cool with genocide, man, kicking babies' heads off, cutting people's dicks off, hanging them, burning them, dragging them down the streets, blowing their buildings up. You are on their team if you do not at all acknowledge that information because you are protecting their empire by remaining willfully ignorant of these, these events that have been documented and are still being fought by the indigenous people every single day every day it's being said but this system is based upon this jester alchemy is based upon ignorance is based upon keeping you distracted and ignorant the distractions are these storylines that i'm getting get, get into with the cern and all this other stuff and the <clears throat> All the fear also plays a part into it, too, because you're afraid to even ask questions. <coughs> Let me finish this before. So this universe, let's just say this being, when it cut that cord to the most high, now it had a world that allowed the ultimate evil to manifest. The only thing is that you're going, if you're going to have the ultimate evil manifest, then you're going to have the ultimate um positive frequencies or the the loving frequencies or connections or natural frequencies you're going to have those also manifest into the reality this is what i see in reference to the physical beauty as 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 jacked up as this place even flowers are killing eating and like eating animals and shit like uh what was it the venus fly trap eating flies and uh, you have <clears throat> and, uh, you you see what i'm saying it's like this there, there's this extremes. This, this is a place of extremes, extremes positives and extremes negatives, and some kind of way, it works out to where. Here we are, like here, here, here. Everybody is. Yet all this stuff is still going on. So we don't ask these questions when we don't ask these questions or even ponder on these subjects. We don't really go anywhere with this information. Why? Because like this image is showing you every joke made by the mainstream media about Bill Cosby and O.J. Simpson can also be made with colonialism as the punchline instead. Only those jokes would be a million times more powerful and have the opposite effect on the people than is currently intended by the mainstream agenda. The mainstream media is designed to make you think, act, and feel a certain way. Uh, think, act, and feel about certain people a certain way. This is why, even to this day, you see, and this is not to defend OJ or Bill Cosby in any kind of way. I'm just speaking generally in reference to how today you're still hearing all these jokes about OJ. Like today, 2018, 2018, even in reference to Bill Cosby stuff, you're still hearing jokes on like on a regular basis through these late night talk shows and all and Saturday Night Live and all. The, you, it's a constant thing. I've been observing this for a few years now. So when you see the trend, when you start to re, uh, realize these patterns, then you can start piecing together things that you might not have seen before. And these patterns exist in everything it's not just a pattern of how you're triggered to think act and feel a certain way about uh 
so-called black people through how they tell you something about OJ and and um, Bill Cosby in the same way that they pre present these these athletes, these basketball players and football players. They just want you to see the fights and how destructive they are and how the um, the uh, referees have to be the ones and the referees are all so-called white. They're all the ones that are in charge. They're the ones who have to keep everything in control. So <clears throat> you're subconsciously being programmed to think, act and feel a certain way. And you might not consciously hate uh, so-called black people, but subconsciously you are being programmed through your sports to hate so-called black people. Through the way the system is designed, you have the owners who are all so-called white, and you have the players who are the majority are mel melanated of some sort. And then you have, oh, they're playing the victim. Now there's not enough white people in basketball, in, in NBA, and there's not enough this and that. So you have all these, these different angles that are being played. All of this is designed, like I said earlier, if you are going to allow, if you are going to be susceptible to be mind controlled on the level of black versus white, then that's what you will do. That's what will happen to you. Just like me, I was susceptible to going into the military at seven, 17 years old. So I went into the army today. Would I do that? Hell no. And at this, and even beyond that, I am also now knowledgeable enough to explain to a 17 year old why they should not do that, why they should not go in there. If, from my own perspective, you're going to do whatever you're going to do. But from my own perspective, what you're going to be a part of, just like I said earlier about the people who are to completely on board with this whole like um, post-Columbian consciousness that doesn't even acknowledge the indigenous people across the earth in order to maintain its own empire. That's the same kind of mentality. You have, people are going to trap. They're going once you're trapped in that mentality, then you have to create defensive mechanisms in order to maintain your own sanity, to maintain your own idea of consciousness in that universe that you have created. So all of this exists, like I said in the last video, it exists in the jester alchemy, the chaos, and this. Uh, like I explained earlier in this video, the don't look at what's happening in reference to being separated from the soul, the spirit. You don't even have to say the most high. You can just say the soul or you and not say not to say that's the same thing. I'm just saying in reference to the people who have gotten to a point of saying, well, um, I'm not too sure about the, the, the most high thing and all this other stuff. But do you have a are you a soul? Are you a soul experiencing a physical reality? Those are the people that I'm talking to right now. And the people who are entertaining this CERN, string theory, simulation theory, um, and even some of the people on flat earth are at least open to that reality of being the soul, having a physical experience. So if you're not that, just click off this video right now and go somewhere else. Uh, because that whole atheist living in darkness, emptiness, you're nothing. You're just based upon science because Neil deGrasse Tyson said so. If that's you, by all means, be about your business. Just don't be about your business up here because that shit will get shut down by either me or somebody in the comment section. Because you're just regurgitating some other cartoons that 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 mind controllers who want to control you and your future generations. They just made you think and act and feel that way. So... Good luck with that, but we're moving on from that now. So did I get into? So, yeah, the more and more you're separated from your consciousness in a sense that you buy into this artificial reality, the more and more you buy into that reality, the more openings like in reference to possession, the more openings that you have that you're uh, you can be susceptible to. So susceptible to being possessed by some kind of entity we can see this entity today you can shrink it all the way down get out of the possession place you can get you can see uh excuse me the university system as being possessed where people graduate and then they pride themselves in their degree and they walk around like 
like wearing a gold necklace with their degree on it as if they're king shit of the universe. Just look at like Neil deGrasse Tyson is a perfect example. He's not only taking that degree thing, he's turned it into his personality. He when he when he like squints his eyes and he just makes that he puts off that tone like I don't even have to I don't even have to entertain this. I'm Neil fucking DeGrasse Tyson, bitch. I don't have to do anything. I'm I'm the king shit of this intellectual universe. Like, he just shuts down everything. He is the embodiment of what I was saying of somebody who worships the Western uh, ideologies that are sitting on top of the blood and the bones of the indigenous people. He's that individual that you wouldn't see somebody like that on a regular basis. They only exist really like on TV and like Hollywood and stuff like that. If you were to, if Neil deGrasse Tyson was to take his ass down to East Oakland or West Oakland somewhere and start talking to people, his shit would be ripped up, especially if he was talking to flat earthers. This is why he can't talk to anybody in the flat earth community. Anybody, any of those people, they will never get into any kind Kind of real debate with real people if any debate happens it's going to be on a baseline level that's what i was talking about before it don't matter if eric debay and neil degrasse tyson get into a debate because eric debay is all about that he's all about that, that one that one stream of consciousness that he constantly puts out there and he says shit about the indigenous people he only talking about how the jews run everything and how uh yeah with the heliocentrism and this is not to come down uh, hard on Eric DeBay. I'm just saying because I made a video about him and he responded and he didn't he did the same thing Neil deGrasse Tyson's doing to him when I brought that shit up to him he didn't want to have no conversation he didn't want to get into a conversation with me so the same way Eric DeBay and Jaronism I'll step out and say it again because I ain't here heard shit from them either the same way Eric DeBay or Neil deGrasse Tyson don't want to have real debates or real discussions. It don't even have to be a debate. A real discussion with real people is the, the same way he does that uh, to avoid being exposed. I'm not saying Eric DeBay and Jaronism is trying to be is exposed worthy. I'm just saying they're using the same kind of tactics in order to avoid possible exposure of some shit they might not even be aware of like i said giving jaronism the jaron the benefit of the doubt he might not even be aware of the shit that he could be potentially promoting and same thing goes with eric debay eric debay not like i asked them both they both commented on my channel they come they they're man enough to leave a comment but they don't want to have a discussion they don't want to actually have a live discussion so how is that any different than the whole Eric De or the uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, Bill Nye avoiding all these flat earth discussions? It's the same shit. It's the same thing. Because you got people who cannot get outside of their bubble and people who challenge their bubbles are not, or they just demonize them and say, oh, you're not even worthy. I'm not, you're, they, you're divisive or you got the, you're a racist. You're this, you're that. All right. Well, label me whatever you want, but time will tell. Time will definitely, definitely tell who is what around here because people are only the people, you got a lot of people hiding behind the cloak of conspiracy theorists. A lot of people hiding behind the cloak of a flat earther, the cloak of, the same way they hide behind the cloak of being a progressive. What the fuck does that have to do? What, what does that mean in reference to the colonialism, the genocide, the blood and the bones that predates this entire empire? Nothing. You're living in a damn cartoon. It's a fairy tale. So they ain't no different than flat earthers and conspiracy theorists falling for the same shit. Now this multi-quilted multiverse theory, this is just another complex version of the same shit. This has the same effect on people. So let me let me finish out this this uh emptied out people. So anyway, so yeah, another way that people avoid changing themselves and 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 closing those gaps in their own reality is by demonizing other people or like uh um constantly projecting their own uh, projecting what they're good at against a certain idea 
but not really going into the other ideas where they might not be good at. That's why I said like Neil deGrasse Tyson, they might not be good. It's, it's the hardest thing to do is to entertain, is to change, which is entertaining another level of consciousness. That's the hardest thing to do is to entertain and actually go into another level of consciousness. I'm not saying I'm a higher level of consciousness or anything like that. I'm just saying that um, there are there are some things that other people might be aware of based upon their experience that could benefit other people. But if you lock yourself into a pride ridden world or community of, uh, say, conspiracy theorists or flat earth or the scientism, like I'm the best, I am the Neil deGrasse Tyson of all this stuff, then you're going to you're going to have difficulty with um a lot, a lot of things <laughs> but one of the main things is that you're going to have difficulty with changing period and you're going to have difficulty with realizing the gaps in your own reality so the more and more people are emptied out the more and more people have these crevices that are locked into their reality because how i see it through time you have uh, you have things that you're doing like at at, at 22 you're at 20 something years old you're you're going to learn something at, and you're going to learn something more at 30 you're going to learn something more at 40 50 so on and so forth if you don't make those shifts in consciousness then you will be like that door in a sense it doesn't close completely but you stop receiving uh as much energy just think of it as like electrical energy and keep Keep, pick, keep that picture in your mind of that cord that has been cut. Just imagine that cord being cut in slow motion. So that cord being cut in slow motion is you being cut away from your own soul because you've locked yourself into this broke down, backwards, upside down, jester alchemy reality. And as soon as you hit that point, whether it's based upon your experience or based upon just the timing or whatever, it could be a whole number of things, then that cord is completely severed. And now you move on to whatever other reality it could be this another reality like this one. It could be something else. I don't know. But that's how I imagine it. And that's how um, I interpret dreams and, and how this alchemy that's used against us uh, is working. Uh, and that's, that's how I trace it back all the way to this idea of the ultimate evil and so on and so forth. So these innocent beings, like you're born innocent, you might have baggage with you, but ultimately a baby is going to learn all of this garbage from their surroundings. Like you're, you're and the surroundings it's, itself is going to install a lot of these programs into your reality. So the babies born innocent come in here you might have potentials that could manifest into your reality if you follow a certain um, path or if you're if your parents follow a certain path and put you on that path ultimately you're you're a part of that um, how I see it you it's nobody that's more in charge of your path than you so if these things are happening, it's never about like, oh, somebody else did this. It's it's going to be on a soul level dealt dealing with your relationship to this experience. So the experience and the experience are in some kind of way. I don't have the answers for what that is because it's some horrible shit that happens in this reality that I don't want to downplay by saying like, oh, yeah, you, you just made that happen because it's not that simple. It's more complex than that. And I would like people to have more discussions on what that actually is and, and start piecing this stuff together because a lot of healing will come from that when that happens. So on the opposite end of that, when the baby grows up, the baby's just say for the worst case scenario, this baby grows into just being completely empty, has no connection with the soul, has no connection with the most high, no connection with the family, no connection with friends. Nothing is just empty, loves atheism, loves, you know, Neil deGrasse Tyson and science. And then that's it. They believe in the universe of nothingness. So that, in my eyes, is the perfect um, lineup or setup for uh, an innocent conscious being to be possessed by these parasitic entities. Whatever you want to call it, however you want to call it, it's up to you. This is I'm just trying to use as many general terms 
um, as I can so people can connect the dots in their own world in their own way because this is how I've learned by observing all these different stories and piecing this stuff together and the one of the main ways that I've been able to do that is by not subjecting myself or locking myself into one particular belief system and con constantly growing and, and observing this reality for how I observe it rather than for what something, some book or somebody told me to think and act like, you know, so there, there's pieces to learn from everybody, but um, you're going to be er and you will forever be growing and learning. So these crevices in order for the power the superpower at the top of this pyramid and everybody in between in order for them to or it to get more powerful the crevices the gaps in your reality have to be more a part of your reality than you than your soul so this is why the the university system is so complex this is why um it's getting more and more complex with cern and all this other stuff this is why Mandela effect is coming into to effect right now and it's making people think, act and feel a certain way based upon their level of consciousness, but ain't really going into the experience itself. Just seeing this as, oh, yeah, this is a thing that I know is actually happening. And what is there presented to you for you to actually believe in? They got CERN. And what are they connected to CERN? They got Shiva connected to CERN and the destroyer God energy. And they want they want that's a direct connection between somebody who can't think for themselves worshiping the the technology made by these people who, by the way, are total bullshitters that when they lied to you about your universe you think they're going to be telling the truth about cern nasa came out in the same the same few years it was like 58 and 56 that cern and nasa came out so this is the same story that's being uh, shared with people and if you're just looking at all this mandela effect stuff and saying well it's cern doing it then in all these years past and you ain't seen something beyond that then I don't know what else to say, because that was like in my first Mandela Effect video. I was like, if anything, why would you trust these assholes for anything? And, 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 and beyond that, what really matters is that for them to put that in your face is to make you think that they have the power to do such things. So you're surrounded by these these. Um, power trips the power hungry ass people who need to convince you of their power they need to convince you of their knowledge and it will use fear excuse me it will use fear it will use psychological manipulation it will use desensitization it will use um something like pride it'll make you proud of your your uh, your um technology it'll, it'll use anything to merge you with the consciousness of that separated entity whatever that is it even use protests when you look at all this anonymous stuff that's going to anonymous popped off in in um the occupy it was like day one occupy occupy wall street and i was in san francisco when it happened day one occupy san francisco um, and it was all about like occup um, anonymous was at the front of that with that whole mask shit. And I got caught up in it. I had a mask, too. And I only wore it for a while until I was like, man, this is some bullshit. Also realizing that it was quite potentially and now seeing that it's definitely uh, a government program to control people no different than Alex Jones controls people. It makes people think and act and feel a certain way. And, and focus on certain subjects. So when I saw that, yes, they referenced Flat Earth, but they were also, and not to mention that there's also like different kinds of anonymous groups. There's like people who want to be anonymous and then they're like doing certain work. And then there's like, um, there, there's like different factions. There's like definitely the government faction, which probably has three different factions in itself. Um, that are running out there, but you look online, you'll see all these different kind of anonymous videos out there. It's, an, it's no different. It's the same shit that's going on out there. So when you look at this, and 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 even giving anonymous the benefit of the doubt, even if it wasn't, um, even if it w was completely legit, which is I can't even like say that with my mouth. 
Um, <laughs> even if it was legit, you think the government is not going to co-opt it? How easy is it to make an anonymous video? Which is why they call themselves anonymous. So I'm not even going to get into that right now. Anyway, the crevices that are kept in your reality are also maintained by knowledge, the illusion of knowledge, the illusion of fullness, the illusion of consciousness. These are illusions that are passed down into our reality by these university systems who are claiming to be of the highest amount of consciousness in this universe and when you trace that all the way back to like i was saying earlier about um possession and being separated from the most high and so on and so forth then you can it, it's on you i'm not saying i'm just sharing that as an example of my perspective this is my perspective of how i piece and trace all this stuff back together um from the the real time current events and the stories that are out there right now, and then how I interpret some of these uh, biblical stories and energetic stories. Like on top of that, like if this place is really full of chaos and the potential for evil, and and also has the idea of free will, if we can entertain that for something, then for a moment, then you can realize that if that's the case in this universe would first and foremost be manipulated by the entities who are going to play the game of that chaos of that evil of that emptiness they will they will first it will, the, the the people who embody that they will first they will run the shit first until the power of the people who are now knowledgeable of that information uproot and completely not you can't you can't do anything with that 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 energy if you don't first acknowledge it which is why that entity or that energy spends so much time making you not acknowledge any information of your past it only wants you to go in the future the new age agenda we're all human there is no race stop talking about the past we need to move forward move into this technology connect with your alien extraterrestrial brethren as star seeds and indigos and all this other shit out there like they want you to constantly move forward and don't acknowledge anything ignorance is the ultimate evil that's an, uh, an african proverb egypt egypt came up with all this see i'm not even gonna get sidetracked with this shit right now ignorance is the ultimate evil and what do you see here? what do you hear in this society ignorance is bliss it's even said in the movies by Cypher in uh, in the Matrix movie when he bites into that cow, which is with the, into that steak, which is a uh, that bloody ass steak, which is also to be worshipped in certain countries. So you can see the disconnect right here. You have the free will of people that are just like you know grinding up a god in certain people's eyes and selling it with Happy Meals to kids, and then you have on, on the other side of the world, you got people like, oh wow. This is a God, this is this and that, and then, and it's deeper than that, but you can see the disconnect that I'm talking about here in reference to the definitions of humanity. You can't even interpret what the definitions of humanity are if you got that big a spread, that big a gap in people's lives and in people's consciousness, and it can't be. So my um, answer for that in this reality is just to be like, all right, well, until it makes more sense, I can now see that this place inhabits at least the ultimate evil or the space for the ultimate evil and chaos and in some kind of way free will. So if that's the case, you can trace it all the way back up to the Bible stories and Lucifer and all that other stuff. You can do that all you want. I'm not going to concern myself with that right now anymore in this video because I'm more focused on the current manifestations of this separation program this jester alchemy or this parasitic consciousness like this this is a real thing it's tangible you can look at it now i don't care what you trace it back to but as long as you're looking at what's going on that's all i'm asking for and when i see things like and this is kind of a reason why i stepped back from the mandela effect for a while is because I learned what I needed to learn from it. I also wanted to observe where it was going to go and how it was going to be um, installed into the future, future 
talks of what's going on. I wanted to know. And, and the main thing was that, yes, it's a thing that I observe. I could kind of entertain it. I, I definitely could entertain it. Like that whole uh, Sex in the City thing and Louis Anderson and some of the other ones that I can't remember because I didn't look too much. Um, so some of those, like, like they really were just like, nah, man, that can't be. Um, not all of them, but some of them. But that wasn't my main focus. That I wasn't concerned with that. I don't really care about that. I want to know how this is happening, why this is happening, what is actually happening, what could be leading up to this. And every time I ask myself about the Mandela effect and how it relates to the experience, or it all relates, it always relates back to the 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 like the vibration or the frequency of consciousness. So like somebody who's going to subject themselves to Let's say, for example, like when you see the Stockholm's the Stockholm syndrome where you have a kid that has been kidnapped, that kid that has been kidnapped, that that whole world like in the beginning, they're still connected to their world. That's the size of the world, let's say, for example. But when that kid is kidnapped and kept in a basement, their world now becomes a basement. Over time, what the Stockholm Syndrome is, is that they adjust to their new world and actually start to love that world. Eventually, they become that world. So this is what's happened to the people who believe in themselves into the heliocentric universe. And in order to maintain, they, they, they develop this certain kind of love, in a sense, and trust, in a sense, in the individuals who kidnapped them in the first place. These are people, these are entities who created another universe for another sovereign being. So that's what you can, you can see that as somebody being sucked in, their consciousness being sucked down to a basement, to nothing. So the same thing is happening how I'm seeing it. That's that's one example of how you can get sucked into a world and sucked out of your own expansion of consciousness. This is like I said, at 10, 20, 30 and 40 years old, you have these certain doorways that are um, that are not going to close completely, but they're they're not going to be as active as they were when you were that age. So you're not going to be able to activate it as much. And the thing is to distract people so much, which is why you have K through 12 and then the university system sucking up the, the 20s and the 30s of people. Because in those time frames, you're going to have the most powerful people activating the most powerful parts of themselves that will disassemble this parasitic system. So in order to to keep them from doing that, you have to distract them. All these new distractions that are out there right now are also a part of it. Conspiracy theories, um, shallow interpretations of the Mandela effect, shallow interpretations of flat earth, shallow interpretations of um, the conspiracy theories and uh, the, the pedophilia rings and the the colonialism to where they don't even talk about it. It's like, oh, yeah, no, no, we're not even going to talk about that. It's just you're a low vibration. You're and, and then even further, what's even worse than that is people who uh, remain willfully ignorant to it in the new age. And then they build another universe. They build a love and light universe on top of a death and destruction foundation. That's what the new age community is. Uh, so you have different people who are going to be susceptible to a new age, lighter version. Like they're going to go into there. Other people are going to follow anonymous. Other people are going to follow TYT, Alex Jones, David Icke, um, whatever it is. Stephen Greer, the Democrats and Republicans, Barack Obama, whatever the individual is is going to allow themselves is going to choose to learn. They will follow that reality. So these various realities that are out there that are prepackaged for you to implode yourself and steal your time, because that's ultimately what it is. If your consciousness is stolen, then it's your time that's being stolen. It's both your consciousness and your time. So if consciousness can control your time, then the system only needs to control your consciousness and you will control your time because your consciousness has been convinced to control the time. So how that how th those various ways that happen are, like I said, 
the new age agenda. You have these channelers perspectives that are out there. They control your time by locking you into waiting for your extraterrestrial alien agenda to land in some way and teach everybody about humanity because we're rallying uh, together, whether it's an evil alien or a love and light alien. Either way, we have to find the humanity in ourselves and become one become un- unified and all this other shit. Think they ain't going to use that shit to, to to try to lock people in. They already got the flat earth map on the United Nations flag. They already got Hermione and and uh, Leonardo DiCaprio speaking at the United Nations talking about, you know, rights and all this other shit. They ain't said a damn thing about broken treaties and genocides and massacres. No, they want you to just move on. Every single thing that's out there is designed to make you think that you should just move on and don't ask any more questions. That is the design to make you further invested into this empty, chaotic universe more than you are your own soul. So you have channelers that are out there telling you, listen to them, because like I said about, if you haven't heard my perspectives on on channelers, I'm not going to go into it too much, but check out the videos that are in like the synthetic uh, singularity, synthetic new age uh, playlist that's on this channel. That, that, that's got them all broken down in there. But real briefly, these channelers put out this information in these new age communities and it's all about these aliens being existing in the future of some kind. They exist in like 700 years from now. Like, for example, Bashar exists 700 years from now. And uh, the channel is connecting with his future self or the channeler is connecting with its future self and bringing information from the future timeline back to help us make a better world for them. It, it, it's total ridiculousness but when you go when you realize and you just use their basic math they say their world wouldn't exist their world only exists based upon the level of consciousness of who we are right now so if who we are right now is completely ignorant and destructive what kind of future do you think that's going to create a very intelligent ignorant and destructive consciousness so that's where i'm saying this consciousness that this and this information that's coming through these channelers is and it's so much alive and and this is just giving it the benefit of the doubt completely it's so alive in some kind of way that it still in order to maintain its life even if it's not at all in physical reality or any kind of reality other than just being channeled through some supposedly channeled through some person um, in order to make its world just to just to think of it for example how i'm just theorizing right now in order to manifest its own physical universe it has to convince the people who are in the creator mode of the physical reality to create through their consciousness, their own version of the future timelines that benefit the, the, the future consciousness, supposed future consciousness, which is not a future consciousness. It's just a consciousness is the same kind of entity that makes you empty out yourself and follow some broken ass idea of reality. It's the same thing. because And, and instead of making you locking you into this broken interpretation of reality uh, through death and destruction, the new age channeling perspective locks you into a love and light interpretation of the future. And what I'm seeing is with the Mandela effect, the Mandela effect like CERN is like the lubrication between all of these realities. The Mandela effect, CERN, simulation theory, string theory, um, quilted multiverse reality, all of these are like the the oil, the lubrication between the new age consciousness, the new age mentality that they want you to think and act in, and the old destructive, already falling university system that's based upon the Big Bang Theory, Evolution Theory, and all the other theories that they put out there. There needs to be some kind of lubrication in order to make 
more and more people more susceptible to the new age mind control program and stuff like the Mandela effect and and people like uh, David Icke talking about, you know, reptilians and holograms and interdimensional, even Alex Jones talking about interdimensional beings. All of these, because they don't never really go any further than scaring the shit out of you. That's what the fear porn is about. It's about locking you in to a, a limbo space so that once the status quo of society figures out what is the most optimal mind control program, it can just snatch you out of space and lock you into whatever kind of mindset that it wants you to be within so there's different versions of that like i said it's the channelers and you have a stockholm syndrome is just another version of that you can say you can see like uh, other examples of how we get locked into certain bubbles you can see like the truman show like just giving the truman show a, a, a realistic approach for a moment he was locked into that bubble for how long since he was a child and he was kept there since he was a child until ultimately he broke free of it and then spoke to the creator of that world and and you think they ain't making advertising money off of his ass how is that not an example of the advertising money that's being made off of off of everybody on facebook and everything else so you got the truman show bubble you have, uh, just think about kids, when kids believed in Santa Claus. Like, these kids are told by the authority of their reality, which is their parents, that Santa Claus, who lives in the North Pole and flies with reindeer, is going to bring some presents to his fat ass, is going to fit through the this, this uh, uh, fireplace, this chimney, where some people don't even have chimneys. They, they, the kids still believe this shit. So, because, then why they believe it is because the authority, the authority, the parents are the authority figures. Now, when I list all these other programs off, it's not the kids that they're the authority figures. It's the system itself that's the authority figure. So, when you believe in heliocentrism, it ain't no different than believing in Santa Claus. And there's people who only defend that because they're believing in the stories that are told to make you believe in Santa Claus. Like if you don't have a fireplace in your house and you watch all the cartoons about Santa Claus sliding his ass down a fucking chimney and then, the, and then your parents say, oh, what, what, how does Santa Claus get in here? Because um, we live in an apartment. We don't have a fireplace. And the parents are like, shut up and stop asking stupid ass questions. He just materializes. He's, Santa Claus is Santa Claus. He don't need no chimney to get in. He's just going to put presents there. Just go to sleep. It's Christmas tomorrow. That's what all these other damn theories are, are to make you think and act a certain way based upon the original illusion in the first damn place. You still believing in Santa Claus. So you have, it ain't no different than people believing Democrats and Republicans, one or the other is going to save the world. Like believing that the, the Western ideologies are going to save the world. Bullshit. Western ideologies are based upon not acknowledging the garbage, the death and destruction that has come at its own hand. So these are these bubbles. You got war, you got CERN, you got string theory, quantum entanglement, quilted multiverse theory. All of this is existing in the theoretical consciousness. And the difference between that, the, the, the only thing, <clears throat> some of the few things that I, I've seen that are um, in my own life that are based upon some kind of reality is, is like observing the, the difference between time. Time in reference to, I've been doing this since I was a kid, since I never stopped re, uh, remembering my dreams since I was, since I was, a, I was a kid. I was a kid, kid. So, so my relationship was with time pretty different than a lot of people. Um, I, if you can understand that you can fall asleep for 10 minutes and have like a three hour dream then you can understand the, the difference between what I'm saying in reference to time and what time actually is. So you have, this all fits in. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna trace it back to the Mandela effect and all this other stuff as soon as I get there, but I gotta go through all these things first. So time, just put that on a shelf. Something is going on with 
the the relationship between the conscious and the subconscious reality and time. And if these mainstream mind controllers are using all this fear tactics with all this 666 programming with Google and 666 with CERN and all this other stuff, and then it's traced back to melanin and then it's traced back to uh, Shiva and the God of Destruction and CERN and all this other stuff, you know that, that this is going to be activated in some kind of way. You know it's going to be used. If you got Google... CERN, NASA, and the highest damn scientists out there talking about this shit, you know it's going to be used in some kind of way. And the toy, the Happy Meal toy for all this CERN shit is what? The Mandela Effect. Because what are you looking at? The toys, literally looking at the toys, trying to figure out, hey, wait a minute, am I misremembering this? No, no, I'm not misremembering that. It's totally different. It's the Baron Steen Bear, not no Baron Stain, like, like all this stuff. That's not the point. The point is the experience itself. And is it possible for consciousness to, if, if, if consciousness can adjust time, can the expansion of consciousness adjust the experience itself that's my question with the mandela effect and that's why I, what i've been that's why i kind of stopped looking into all the the happy meal toys with the mandela effect is because i was like wait a second this is uh this is th this is missing the point for me it's it's missing the point i can see this but i want to know what's underneath all of this stuff and if this is directly connected to programs like CERN, then you have to know that there's some kind of manipulative consciousness that's going to make people think, act, and feel a certain way that will benefit the system. Not you. It will benefit the system. So the Mandela effect is not out there. It's not conspiracy theorists and, you know, people are just like uh, opening doorways or... or, or um, into a higher interpretation of their reality or stuff like that. It's only like that if you activate it like that. It's not going to be like that just because you're looking at the Mandela effect. That might be a small part of it, but ultimately it's going to, it's, this information is just opening the door. It's you that actually has to walk through that door. And what's happening with the Mandela effect? Most people just open the door and then they just play with the toys. They don't walk through the fucking door. They just sit around in there looking at and, and priding themselves in how, oh, I'm like this. I remember it this way. You're you're just re remembering it wrong. You're on a different timeline. You're you're. The, it ain't no different than people talking about flat versus globe. You see the con the correlations here between how people actually act in reference to how people are uh, the potential that people have to go deeper into these conversations. So when you have these people out here talking like CERN, he says CERN is a concrete example of worldwide international cooperation and a concrete example of peace. How? The place which makes, in my opinion, better scientists, but also better people. Fabiola Giannotti, whoever that is, probably somebody connected to CERN in some kind of way, obviously. Then you have people like uh, Brian Cox talking about anyone who thinks Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> Anyone who thinks the Large Hadron Collider will destroy the world is a twat. This fucking guy, with his, all of his universal, you know, and I told you in previous videos how they, they use the English accent to make it thing that David Attenborough telling you about planet Earth. They make you, they make you believe this. Why? Because the English accent is the authoritative vibration of your intellect and you believe anybody who speaks with this kind of accent because what it does is it locks it in to the programs that have been prepositioned by the system because you're watching these television shows that are all english accents and all western focused just like the Queen of England and Great Britain and all that shit. This is the cheapest magic ever. But even the cheapest magic can rule the world. Because even the cheapest magic is better than no magic. And that's what you have with people walking around here talking about, oh yeah, well, you know, I'm an atheist and I, I just trust people like Neil deGrasse Tyson. That ain't magic. 
You copycatting. You can't copy and paste magic. You have to actually do magic. These motherfuckers are doing magic. You just talking about magic. When you're talking about Star Talk Radio and Bill Nye and Neil deGrasse Tyson. Ain't shit. You ain't got a, an ounce of alchemy in your expression. You just spitting up some Happy Meal toys that somebody gave to you. Sold at the flea market. Ain't got nothing to do with your ass. And then this is how it's sold to you. Like Neil deGrasse Tyson says, asteroids have us in our sight. The dinosaurs didn't have a space program. <laughs> so they're not here to talk about this problem. We are. And we have the power to do something about it. I don't want to be the embarrassment of the galaxy. The embarrassment of the galaxy. How can you be the embarrassment of the galaxy? You see this dude talking about, he's priding himself. Yeah, I'm even going there. I don't want to be the embarrassment of the galaxy to have had the power to deflect an asteroid and then not and end up going extinct. <laughs> if we have the power to deflect an asteroid, then we must do it. These guys are playing God. They want to, through fear, the power to deflect an asteroid. That's that's what's going to convince you to give these dudes 50 million dollars a day and then some. To deflect a fucking asteroid that p quite possibly potentially could be coming down here? Because you don't want to be like the dinosaurs? What the fuck? <sighs> so yeah, the... Anyway. You see what I'm saying in reference to the intelligence that is uh, pawned off as intelligence, but it's just a mind control. It's an alchemy of uh, control. And you can trace it all the way back to the, the 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 lord of this world if you want to. I briefly started going into how I see that um, earlier in this video. But it's up to you how you want to do that. Share in the comment sections however you feel. But that's how I spitball, you know, what I'm what I'm looking at. But ultimately, these individuals like Neil deGrasse Tyson, Brian Cox, Ray Kurzweil, Bill Nye, Michio Kaku, these are all the individuals who do that same thing. They say that they are the authority of the universe, and through that authority, you have to follow them. You have to pay them. You have to submit to them. This is why uh, and and be proud of what they're proud in. You have to be afraid of what they're afraid of. And you have to act like they act. So even Neil deGrasse Tyson, this is another thing that's a part of the psychological program that is Neil deGrasse Tyson. This dude is supposed to be like one of the smartest people in the world. Yet he's still an arrogant piece of shit. Like, what is that doing to these kids? Like we don't we don't really think about that like the the humanity like the persona, like these super smart super brains out there they can't even come together and think about how to not bomb other countries. These people can't even come to if if these people can't come together then you have no hope you know no chance in hell. These people got all the money in the world. Mark Zuckerberg, Neil deGrasse Tyson, all these actors and actresses, all these politicians, all these people who are in the know. They have all the resources in the world. This is another part of the biggest part of the mind control program. They have all the biggest and best uh, resources at their expense, yet they still can't pull their asses together and do anything positive. Not even on a micro scale, let alone a worldwide scale. They can't even do anything for a little community. And if they do, or if anybody does in any kind of way, they'll be taken out. Look at Malcolm X. Look at what he was talking about. Look at, I mean, a number of the other people who are actually talking about information that uproots this system. They will be removed from this system in some kind of way, or they will be censored and put in a corner or some kind of like that, demonized in some kind of way. But who gets promoted in this system? These shallow ass promoters. Why do you think they put Mark and Patricia out there in the front lines of that flat earth? PewDiePie, 60 million subscribers. 60 million subscribers on his YouTube channel. He makes fun of Mark and Patricia in the flat earth community. Yeah, and, and Eric DeBay in reference to Joe Rogan and that whole thing. And him supposed to be having a debate with Neil deGrasse Tyson. You think that's a mistake? With his... Uh, with, 
it's only going to take one little moment for Neil deGrasse Tyson to just cut the legs out of Eric DeBay and, and ask him and be like, yo, why did you uh, have your channel shut down? Was it because you were putting out some anti-Semitic sort of shit and all this other stuff? And then you'll have however many minutes of Eric DeBay trying to defend himself. And he's only going to dig his dig himself into a deeper hole because... They're just going to sell the story that makes him the bad guy. No different than these CBS and, and Vice and all these other all these other channels. Yeah, they, they go in very nice in these flat earth interviews. But when they make the video, they make you look stupid. So what, what do you think? The, there's no difference there. Ultimately, what happens is that everybody gets distracted and everybody gets their time stolen by the individuals who have put this this um, story in front of you to be consumed with. And you're still not thinking for yourself. You're thinking for something else. You're thinking for something else with other information and never even really doing anything there, doing anything for yourself. Most people, because they're so afraid of everything that's going on. So <clears throat> I got sidetracked from the time thing. I'll get back to that in a second. Um, well, might as well go into it now because it's only quick. So how I differentiate between the difference between time and subconscious time is that I've called conscious time solid time. So it's like the physical reality. It's a material time. And then you have the it's only to emphasize the the, the potential of experience within that time. So potentially in 10 minutes of the physical reality, you have three hours of dream experience if you're lucid in those three hours of dream you have potentially fit three hours in 10 minutes so that's the difference so this is like saying like um, some people have said like the subconscious um, uh, neurons that are firing off or your your subconscious uh, self is like 30,000 times more powerful or more um computative or if that's a word like it can compute like 30 times 30,000 times more faster and more efficiently than um than your conscious reality as far as because for whatever reason how I see it is that you know we, we have more you can feel more when not necessarily more because you can feel emotions and stuff in dreams but there's something to say for the the smell of something and how long that takes and like cooking something and feeling something and, and you know uh, an actual physical uh hand a physical love that is different than a, a, a non-physical love in the subconscious reality there's something different there and it's equivalent in some kind of way in reference to that 30,000 um energetic you know theory that's out there that I just wanted to put that out there to um, be the precursor to the differences between observing time from this dead big bang heliocentric sun uh, like sun worship earth going around all these planets go dead planets going around the sun and so on and so forth because you can you can build an entire universe you can build an entire observation of your reality from just the relationship between your subconscious and your conscious self and that relationship with time you can you can you can design an entire interpretation of this reality based upon just those three things those are you can create like a vector a, a back azimuth and create and find out where you are with those three main points your conscious reality your dream reality shit what was the other one <laughs> time <laughs> and time so you have and how how those all fit with time and then how I've gone even further is to see how the system uses the um, the manipulation of our subconscious, which is the manipulation of our dreams, the manipulation of our conscious reality and the manipulation of our time and consciousness. Once all of those are being observed from how the system uses it against us, then you can start piecing together things that um start to make more sense about possibly the fabric of this universe 
And you don't even need any of the Mandela effect or CERN and any of that other stuff. You can spend generations, like you can, you can spend years trying to interpret this. What I'm saying is that you don't have to reinvent the wheel because from my observations, the ancestors have already done a lot of this work, which is why they can't go into that information. So in order to distract from that information, people like Neil deGrasse Tyson have to say things like, the argument is called sim simulation argument. And he argues that we are all very likely not living in a real universe, but living in a simulated universe. And we are being simulated on the hard drives of computers of the future and that could easily translate into the new age language. These computers and these hard drives of these computers are were created and are controlled by the future alien extraterrestrials that are coming through the channeled information. They could easily say that. Let's just leave that out there for now. So that's one way that simulation theory could be connected to the new age agenda. And then the other way is obviously through the fear programming through CERN of opening up interdimensional doorways and allowing bad aliens or bad um, entities through cutting, you know, cutting the fabric of the simulated universe or the string theory universe. And then all this horrible stuff happens and oh my goodness. So, <clears throat> yeah, all that stuff is there and here you got Bill Nye talking about science is the best idea humans have ever had. The more people who embrace that idea, the better. That's just like Christianity saying Jesus is the best idea humans have ever had. The more people who embrace that idea, the better. It's the same shit. So these people play their parts in order to make you think, act and feel a certain way. And some of them play parts that are more intricate, like Neil deGrasse Tyson and Elon Musk and Ray Kurzweil. And other people play more shallow versions, like uh, uh, these politicians and actors or, who are talking about you know flat earth or simulation theory or Elon Musk. Elon Musk is a good example of, he's just, uh, he's just seen as like a smart guy who's a businessman who's made like uh, rockets and um, cars and stuff, but he has, he has opinions on simulation theory. So he's an authority figure in your reality. So these authority figures actually affect your consciousness, just like the Mandela effect, like I was talking about before. I'll get into it in a second. But the individuals, the entities that affect how you interpret your reality, they're affecting your level of consciousness. So like when Ray Kurzweil says, our technology, our machines is part of our humanity. We created them to extend ourselves. Who's this we shit you're talking about? We created them to extend ourselves. No, you created that shit to have the idea to extend yourself. Why would you need to extend yourself? Why the fuck aren't you doing anything about what you are right now? This is why people in this system has to focus so much on the future. Because they, they can't observe what's happening right now. Because if they observe what's happening right now, they'll have to acknowledge what happened in the past. This is why technology and all these university programs need to focus your energy on the future, the idea of the future. So we created them to extend ourselves. And that is what is unique about human beings. So these assholes give you the definitions of what it means to be a human being. Completely, completely lacking empathy, totally vested in technology. That's what it means to be a human being, to create a robot, to extend yourself. That's a that's the most basic ass definition of what it means to be human. And that's exactly what this system wants. Basic ass people having the illusion of being super intelligent because they have some kind of technology either on their on their person or on their body or in their body. That's the idea that people are going to buy into because they've already been conditioned to not even be able to not have their phone next to them. The smartphone conditioning and a lower version of that is a more shrunk down, a more easily observable uh, 
version of that is what happens when people cut off Facebook. There's some kind of like, it's like an addiction. There's like this uh, thing that happens where you feel a certain way, you feel disconnected, you feel, and what you do, you close the gaps. The emotional gaps get closed by the individual, the individual who doesn't know what to do with that information. So they fill their, the voids of information with the information that's passed down by other people like Ray Kurzweil, Neil deGrasse Tyson, and Bill Nye. So you have people exponentially bogging themselves down with this distractive information. And ultimately, at the same time, they're being programmed to generate this new interpret, new interpretation of reality, this new interpretation of the experience. So yeah, like this guy says, our brain simulates reality. So our everyday experiences are a form of dreaming, which is to say they are mental model simulations, not the things they appear to be. That could be explained in many different ways, but his way of his back of his his intention of explaining it from that perspective is based upon channeling that perspective into simulation theory. This is why these people get projected in. They're not going to go into how the indigenous people interpreted their dreams. They're not going to go into how the indigenous people interpreted this reality. They want to challenge, cha channel that energy straight into uh, what will benefit the future mind control programs. And best believe CERN, simulation theory, technology, and all this other shit that's out there is a part of it's on the agenda. So you have, like I said, Elon Musk. He's not seen as like one of those guys. He he's kind of like seen as the outskirts. He's basically the new NASA. He's the new face of NASA. And then he says on he says on here like the strongest ar argument is us probably being in a simulation. I think is the following. Forty years ago we had Pong, two rectangles and a dot. That's where we were. Now forty years later we have photorealistic 3d simulations with millions of people playing simultaneously and it's getting better every year see that's a that's a mind control program it's like oh yeah that's true i remember pong yeah and and better the term that he uses is better so but he's not including society as a whole and how it's it's gotten worse they don't include that in the definitions of humanity their definitions of humanity are strictly based upon the material and technology they don't give a fuck about compassion and empathy and and everything else that the indigenous people are tapping into spiritually psychologically and throughout this entire experience they are solely vested in the idea that creates a, a, a physical warship a materialism warship. So it goes further into seeing, uh, until people see robots going down the streets, killing people, they don't know how to react because it seems so ethereal. Trying to make robots more human than humans because humans have been conditioned to destroy themselves. So this is like I said before in, in reference to the jester alchemy. The joke, the, the fool has to make a fool out of you. The way it makes a fool out of you is by making a fool out of itself and then including you in the story it used to make a fool out of itself. So now that you've been sucked into the world of foolery by joking and laughing about how they made a fool of themselves, look at Hollywood, look at how Hollywood jokes about, you know, white people being a certain way and black people being a certain way and Asian people being a certain way and these people being a certain way, that's the way it's jokingly sucking you into the level of consciousness of this joker alchemy so that it levels out the playing field of nothingness and then it can just move forward just the same way the late night talk show hosts do with Trump and Hillary and all this other stuff. They just laugh it all away because they are the authorities on what is real, on what matters. And these assholes like Elon Musk and Neil deGrasse Tyson, they act as the lubrication. They're, they're the lubrication between you getting fucked every single day and being mind controlled every single day. These, are, these guys are the lube every single day. And you can't think for yourself because you're constantly be, being told to think what they think. You think what it tells you to think. And if you don't think the way it tells you to think, 
then you're not thinking. You're crazy. You're a you're a, a conspiracy. You're a conspiracy theorist. You're divisive. You're this. You're that. Because you don't regurgitate what this broken ass, empty ass system is telling you to do. And reproduce. Because that's the thing. When when they put that lube in between that that interaction, they're making a baby of consciousness, which is an idea. This is this is a a, a thread like a. a a pebble, a pebble, a belief system, your truth. Elon Musk puts his truth out there. And since you trust Elon Musk, he's just sucked you in to the reproduction program of bullshit. And you get a pebble of truth based upon your belief, not in what he's saying, because you don't know what the hell Neil deGrasse Tyson really says. You don't know what Elon Musk is really talking about. You just like the dude. So these dudes give you these pebbles of their truth or their beliefs, because that's why they call them theories. And you trusting the human or these beings of some sort, because you trust them. You now create truth out of their beliefs. And if their beliefs are based upon a broken, upside down, backwards, destructive ass universe, then your your truth that's been made upon those beliefs you will defend not only you will you will defend your truth and in defending your truth you will inherently be defending their belief systems so you are defending the empire of your own enslavement because you do not go any further than trusting these assholes and all these theories that they put in your universe so he goes even further at the bottom with artificial intelligence we are summoning the demon and all those stories we're there's the guy with the pentagon and the holy water it's like yeah he's sure he can control the demon doesn't work out all he has to do is flip the script he's part he's selling you the fear right now he's like i'm on your team we're, we're, i'm on your team because i'm also thinking that it's going to be dangerous to bring demons possibly bring demons in but the thing is like i said earlier that that's it doesn't matter what the potentials are in there. The what matters is that these individuals who are building this empire based upon technology and these belief systems, they are vested in making you believe that they have the power to open up these doorways to demons. They have the power to do all of this stuff. That's what that's why I said the illusion of knowledge just like it is equal to knowledge itself in at some point just like the illusion of power is equal to power in at some up to some point and if you keep people below that point then you can actually be the king and god of knowledge and you can be the king and god of power as long as you keep people dumbed down below that point of consciousness and the way you get kept down there is by having information kept from you and being kept in fear, fear of getting hit by a fucking asteroid like uh, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson was talking about it. Fear of interdimensional doorways, fear of um, being an outsider because you don't believe what these scientists talk about, fear of not being the smartest human being because you don't accept transhumanism into your body. So you're going to be like a less than kind of human being. You're going to be a, a, afraid of just being dumb, not having the answers that are projected into your reality. You're going to literally be afraid of demons coming through, whether it's CERN coming through through CERN or coming through through artificial intelligence or both. Either way, you're living in like a goosebumps nightmare. Watch reading one book, one Goosebumps series after another, one one book after another, constantly scaring the shit out of you, and you're and you're living in a in a nightmare, and a, a real life nightmare. That, like I said, how their belief systems or its belief systems manifest into your truth. Well, your reality and your conscious reality that you get programmed by every day by the mainstream media. Well, that reality gets manifest into your subconscious reality. So if you're scared every day walking around in regular time, then you're going to be 30,000 times more scared walking around in a dream. Let me say this again, because it goes back to what I was saying in reference to 
the conscious and subconscious and time relationship. If you're scared shitless to where you can't even think for yourself, you don't even want to talk about dreams, you don't even want to activate critically thinking at all, you're so scared shitless watching all of these horror movies and and all of these uh and scared of asteroids and losing your job and and uh, disappointing people and uh, being seen a certain way whatever it is all of that fear adds up in the long run and when you go to sleep the only thing that you can do is just black out because that's actual rest because you're not <laughs> <clears throat> that's the that's the rest that you're allowing yourself to have because you're not going to allow yourself you're not capable of going into the depths of the the experiences and the learning environment that you can have from dreams because you just need to not be fearful every moment of your reality so this is how i'm saying what happens when people black out their dreams you vest yourself into the physical reality and you just lock yourself out of dreaming, which is not just about flying and, you know, being able to breathe underwater and stuff like that. It's there's lessons there. There's connections with all kinds of beings alive and and past. I mean, and, and all kinds of uh, just things that there's so much that can happen in dreams if you were to create that relationship. But you can't do that if, like in a in, in a dream, in reference to uh, um, what's that? Like a, a nightmare when you have a kid, when you're a kid, and you have a nightmare. You have that nightmare. If you have that night reoccurring nightmare over time, you're not getting any sleep. So what what your body's natural reaction is, or your consciousness natural reaction is, is to block out that dream. Is to block out dreams completely if if that needs to happen. And and what happens is over time, you're locking yourself. Once you keep, if you keep locking yourself into, out of the dream subconscious reality, which is like I said, for example purposes, 30 to, 30,000 times more powerful than your conscious reality. Like your potential is 30,000 times more there if you can work in that world. For example, I, obviously I don't know exactly what it is, but it's something and like I was saying in reference to the time, three hours or however many hours in 10 minutes or five minutes, there's something going on there. And it has to, and that's a whole experience. You can get something out of that. You're, you're learning. You're, you're actively engaged in that. What is that? It's something. But if you lock yourself out of it, you're not going to be able to activate you know, certain parts of your conscious reality and sure as hell parts of your subconscious reality, even parts of your subconscious reality in your conscious reality, which is another part of this, this, this relationship that we have. So the main mechanism that keeps us from doing that is fear. So this is why these scientists, they not only install the idea that they are gods and kings because they are saying they're opening up interdimensional doorways the same way they said that they were gods and kings because they they left Earth and went to the moon in a in a flying car <laughs> in a spaceship. Now, now they, they, they sent a rocket into space against all their rules and landed it on on the moon and then came back. That was their version back then of telling you that their knowledge and their intelligence is godly, is based upon like a, a royal sort of in, like the highest mentality of this human experience. So this today's version of that is interpreting stuff like simulation theory. And in order to scare the shit out of you, they're telling you demons are going to come through artificial intelligence and CERN is going to open up interdimensional doorways and, and demons are going to come there. It's not it's not to it's not to. uh well, I'll say it's it's more so, like I said, to make you think that they're powerful enough to do something like that and also to scare the shit out of you. So they'll say that that's why all this Shiva stuff is uh, locked into it. And they have all these dances and ceremonies and rituals to make you think like, oh, yeah, this is really happening. It's really happening. OK. All right. And then when whatever happens that is more than likely going to be projected by them, then they can be the superhero. 
because they've already got the villains out there. They got, they got everything out there already to play the villain. All they got to do is hit the switch. And next thing you know, falling for another, excuse me, falling for another interpretation of your universe. Like this guy says, something may come through dimensional doors at LHC and out of this door might come something or we might send something through. <coughs> They've already been pre-programming you with movies like Stargate and um, all these other interdimensional gateway and then you know tying that in with aliens and then like the stargate movie and the stargate series was tying that into um the pyramids so that's just another slick lubrication way of tying all that into ancient aliens and because ancient aliens is not sold to you like hollywood sells stargate ancient aliens is sold to you like national Ge geographic is sold to you National Geographic, it's like something in between National Geographic and National Geographic and Hollywood. But it's more National Geographic than Hollywood because it has these so-called scientists and ancient astronaut theorists and new age, new age uh, speakers like David Wilcock. It's something more real. So it's a deeper layer of belief. That's why they say ancient astronaut theorists profess or theorize or whatever they say. They say that because they they want to tell you a billion belief systems so you can just make one truth. If anything in this video, this is what it boils down to. They'll sell you a billion belief systems only to make you create one truth. And that's all they need. That's all it needs to create an anchor point in your reality to where a parasite that is leaked or that is uh, latched on to the other edge of that anchor can slowly but surely pull itself closer into your bodies based upon how empty you are. If you're completely emptied out, then you will allow that shit to crawl into your reality. And it regurgitates out of your mouth by people defending the globe, defending um, CERN or defending, you know, whatever they defend, defend the, whatever it is. If, if it's based upon ignoring the relationship that you have to nature and the experience itself, then it's based upon lying to your ass. So I think this is it to close it all out. Going into string theory, this is this. Oh, look at this dude's face, this fucking guy. String theory, strings, a theory of everything. And let's let's go let's go this University of London, Queen Mary U University of London. I'm gonna read this whole thing so you can get an idea of how full of themselves they are with these theories and how these theories, which are beliefs broken as and they can't even be called beliefs because you actually have to believe them they don't believe them they just generated these beliefs so they're not beliefs like active beliefs they're just mind control programs in the file folder called beliefs and or theories and those theories or beliefs become reality when you make them your truth so the way you make them your truth is by listening listening to these people and regurgitating the shit like they say so let me read this real quick string a theory they're telling you a theory of everything so they they're telling you literally like michio kaku says in string theory all particles are vibrations on a tiny rubber band physics is the harmonies on the string chemistry is the melodies we play on vibrating strings the universe is a symphony of strings and the mind of god is cosmic music resonating in 11 dimensional hyperspace oh really mr kaku all right where'd you get all that shit from a fucking theory a whole bunch of theories all that jargon he was talking about but the thing is the main point is that if I say a theory, it's just a theory. I'm just talking, I'm just, you know, freestyling something. If these motherfuckers tell you a theory, that is your truth. 
It becomes your reality. And you can argue other people make beliefs or, or truth, your truth too at the same time, whatever. But what I'm saying in the mainstream perspective, overall, for people who do not think for themselves, for people who only follow faces, they only follow faces on television, when these people say something that involves your interpretation of the universe, when they say anything on that level, whether it's the Big Bang or string theory or simulation theory, whatever it is that they're saying, it becomes your truth because they place themselves as the authorities of truth. When they tell you that their theories are actually facts, until you hold their asses underneath the fire and tell them to stop bullshitting you, they're going to keep making that money off of you believing that they have the authority to generate your interpretation of your universe. And like I said, and I don't even have to go into Mandela effect because this is the last slide. The Mandela effect, like I said earlier, just like any of these individuals, it's the Happy Meal toy. It's the lubrication between the biggest mind controls that you could be locked into coming from this prehistoric sort of nothing observation of your reality that they're telling you about like oh caveman and all this other shit and then it evolved to you know string theory interpretations higher intellect and sending somebody to the moon they, they made you believe in that shit so this version of that just like the mandela effect it's a toy it's something to focus your energy on you need to be folk. You need to be vested in this belief. You need to be vested in this belief so deeply that you build a truth. And, and when they when they constantly make video upon video upon video and book upon book upon degree upon degree upon degree, telling you about belief systems and theories, it's not that difficult to generate a truth out of their bullshit. You start to love it. So. Listen to what this shit is. <laughs> there have been, excuse me, Queen Mary. There have been two great breakthroughs in the 20th century. Physics, Einstein's theory of general relativity, and quantum mechanics. The problem is that the two theories don't get along. String theory is an attempt at solving that problem and creating a theory of everything. String theory asserts that the fundamental building blocks of nature are not like points, but like strings. They have length. These little strings can vibrate. The different particles and forces we see in nature are just fundamental strings vibrating in a multitude of different ways. But has anyone ever seen such strings? The honest answer is no. Oh, you're so honest. The current estimate of the size of these strings is about 10 to whatever meters far smaller than we can see today. Still, the string theory is one of the only candidates we have for a theory of everything. And for many scientists, including string theorists at Queen Mary University of London, its mathematical elegance is sufficient reason to keep pursuing it. Its mathematical elegance is sufficient reason to keep pursuing it. That is the most British and fanciest fucking way to say we have no fucking idea what we're talking about but we're going to keep investigating it because we have nothing else to interpret this reality by or with. So they say shit like string theorists at Queen Mary University of London, which is supposed to be some kind of like authority. It's authoritative setup. Oh, they're so smart. They're not even, they're not only from the university, they're from the fucking Queen Mary University of London. 
They say it's mathematical elegance is sufficient reason to keep pursuing it. Holy shit. (laughs) That's their reasoning behind you believing their bogus ass definitions of the theories of everything. That's, That's what they're telling you. That last statement right there can sum up every single other theory that I've I've referenced that they project into your reality. All their belief systems, all their theories, all of them boil down to slick talk. These fork tongue ass um, snake oil salesmen selling you truth with an asterisk, selling you belief systems with like... Uh, selling you belief systems dressed in the American dream in a suit. Gold-plated belief systems will never be truth. Gold-plated belief systems will never be truth. But you can sell gold-plated belief systems as truth to people who will buy that shit. And this is exactly what's happening right now. So don't fall for all the programs that are going to be projected by CERN. Don't fall for it with the Mandela effect and how they tie it to CERN. Don't fall for the artificial intelligence. Don't fall for flat earth being co-opted and they possibly sell in that uh, simulation theory with because easily all of these can be locked into one belief system easily. I can already see it myself. I can see how all of these flat earth CERN. Mandela effect. Obviously, I've already been talking about it on this channel. If anything, look at every all these videos on this channel. Just go through the titles and look at look at how all this stuff pieces together. And if a video stands out to you, you know, watch it to see what that. That's how I set up this whole channel to give like an uh, an, an idea of how I see how all these fit together, and also inherently show how. This information that is being projected into the reality of the people to create their truth could easily be locked in or, 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 um, you know, turned into a Bible or a a new Bible, a new New Testament, a super new Testament or, you know, where science meets the Bible and all this stuff. I mean, they're already doing that with the New Age community and ancient aliens is the lubrication between the scientific community, the government and. And the new age community. That's what ancient aliens is. So you can see how these different programs, just because you have ancient aliens is like a a buffer in between one level of consciousness and another level of consciousness or one focus and another focus. You can easily see stuff like the Mandela effect being another version. It's just what what, what are people teaching themselves when they look into the Mandela effect? What are they really teaching themselves? To interpret their reality, if they go any further, to interpret any, any further than just the toys of the Mandela effect, start thinking more differently about the fabric of this universe. And that's all the system wants you to do because they have your answers for you. And those answers are what? CERN, simulation theory, string theory, and every other theory they want to pull out of their ass. And flat earth is just like, Flat Earth can it, it can and will be sold as just the the physical motherboard, like the physical hardware for you to express your non-physical software. And then they locked you in to their version of their universe. And you believe it because you've looked at all the other videos and you've researched all this information that ties CERN to the Mandela effect. And that ties uh, simulation theory to uh, transhumanism and 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 flat earth and all this other stuff that they're going to, you know, potentially put out there for you. Whatever it is, it's all going down to people believing in gold plated belief systems and never really tracking down their ultimate truth or a deeper truth because the gold plated belief systems are just too fancy they're too attractive um it's it's too easy to just adopt a a a gold chain belief system and wear it every day because you don't even have to defend it 
You just have to reference it, and then that's it. And then people be like, oh, that's that gold chain. Like, yeah, okay, well, you have to actually earn that. That's what that's what a degree is. And that's what, you know, regurgitating everything that Neil deGrasse and Michio Kaku and Brian Cox, those, those are gold-plated belief systems. And no matter how many gold-plated chains of belief systems you wear on your neck, you can look like a million Mr. T's. It ain't going to make you as hard as Mr. T. And it ain't going to make you have any, it ain't going to get you any closer to any kind of truth. In fact, it's going to weigh you down. And eventually, since it's fake gold, it's going to rot your body. But people don't live in paying attention to their body anyway. We fill our bodies with all kinds of shit. So it doesn't really matter. What matters is what? How much gold you got. And that's what's happening right now. These people got the gold. They make the rules. They have the authority. And people are going to believe it. So it's one of my longer videos. I had to go through this, though, because this is uh, kind of like <coughs> and, uh excuse me, a compilation of the majority of topics and that I've spoken on in in all of these videos and uh, I haven't spoken on the Mandela effect and CERN in a while and my perspectives on that reality so I wanted to get that out there and tie it into the gesture alchemy that I did in the last video so yeah thank you thank you again for all the support um, that people are sharing and liking the video the videos and uh commenting i really do appreciate it and even in the emails i might not be able to respond all the time uh, but i am i eventually will get around to them uh, i might not be able to respond to the comments but i do read them so thank you i really do appreciate it if i don't respond just know that i i can see it and i appreciate it um so yeah Thank you again for the support, and until next time, from all my relations, peace, love, and harmony.